Nature cycles through many great and wonderful seasons, depending on which area of a dimension you travel. Yet in most parts, time stands still. I have little record of the passing of time, except perhaps through this book, and those books that I have had before. Night and day are like rain and shine. If it's not one, it's the other. The days blur into weeks, into months, and my small home in the world just continues. There is something in the air today. Something that reminds me of a time of the year where once my friends and I would get together and feast. I thought today I would take a break and remember those friends and the things we would talk of. Now then, welcome back to another episode of A Druid's Tale. And today we are not straying far and wide. We are not straying much further than the book on my table. My Druid's Tale in front of me. Uh, I've had a few questions and I would like to give them my full response. One of the most frequently asked questions, and it's kind of potty, but people still ask it over and over again, over and over again, almost every other video. Somebody is asking me, what happened to Lewis? And again, on the last episode of A Druid's Tale, uh, L.A.L.M. The Legendary asks, do you know how Lewis is doing? Well, the simple fact of the matter is WTF Geeks, Lewis, who has a large subscriber base and a big, big channel that's been very successful, we've worked together as friends a long time ago. It's definitely a long time ago now. We worked together as friends, made series, did videos, played on servers together, played all sorts of things, did plenty of things, like lots and lots of things. So this is why his subscribers keep coming over to my channel and saying, where's Lewis? Because Lewis has quit YouTube. Now, I don't know for a fact that Lewis has quit YouTube. All I know is that Lewis is still around. I see that Lewis is playing Steam games. Notifications pop up saying Lewis is playing this, Lewis is playing that. I see that he's still got Skype. Everything is okay with Lewis. He has made the decision, it seems, to stop making YouTube videos, to stop making content. He has quit. And that is it. Now, there will be more people, more of his subscribers coming over to my channel and having a look to see if they can find out what's happened to Lewis. And I've already answered many, many times. It's a frequently asked question, as I say. Already asked many, many, many times and already answered quite a lot of times. And I'm getting sick of answering it, to be honest. Because they come over, they look at my channel, they look at the latest video, they leave a question, where's Lewis? And they fail to see the amount of responses that I've already given on previous episodes, on previous videos. So all I can say is if you see somebody who is asking where's Lewis in my comments and I've not replied, it's because I'm not going to reply. It's because I don't think that I need to reply anymore. This is the final, final, final time that I answer that frequently asked question. So if you want to leave them a little note as a comment from me, say he's quit. He's gone. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just not doing YouTube anymore. If he comes back, then we'll call it a well-earned break. Otherwise, if he never comes back, then it's over, done with. Just subscribe to my channel and I will keep you entertained for as long as possible. So with that being said, that's done. That's off my chest. That's there. That's out there now. Do with it what you will. And if that's all you wanted from this video... Thank you very much for joining in. If you want to find out what you could be watching instead of wondering where Lewis is, then just join in with the group down below in the comments and start chatting. Start looking through the play playlists on my channel. Now, the next question is, 
similar sort of question, similar sort of lines, I suppose. Uh, X Animal Lover asked me, "Do you watch other YouTubers that play Minecraft? And if so, who is your favourite?" And um, now, I don't really have a favourite anymore. I did have favourites. My original Minecraft viewing experience was a tutorial goer, and I can't remember his name, because after I had finished watching his backlog of episodes, like episodes 1 to 23, that was basically it. He had he stopped. He quit. He, he had had enough after doing those 23 episodes. But during those 23 episodes, I learned a lot about Minecraft. During those episodes, I found a love for the game. And also, during those episodes, he mentioned that he had discovered and learnt all his trip tricks and tips and things from Etho, and had developed those. So, Etho was my first favourite YouTuber, because I went over to his channel and I found out that he had been doing Minecraft for ages and ages and ages. Then I found out that Etho was part of a Minecraft server community that all made videos. The Minecraft. So I started watching some of their videos, and I narrowed it down from experimenting with watching all of the many Minecrackers, narrowed it down to enjoying watching B00 and Generic B. And B00 and Generic B, the B team, carried on for quite some time, doing modded Minecraft and all sorts. I uh, also encountered Doc M, he was another one of my favourites. Uh, Doc M possibly was a more of a favourite than the B team at one stage because uh, Doc M was pretty cool with his technical builds, whereas the B team were very good at entertaining. And generic, uh, generic was kind of good with the redstone as well. So I was interested in all that for a long time. Um, but nowadays, the building with B Double O series uh, kind of is here and there hit and miss. Most of the Minecrackers are here and there hit and miss with their Minecraft episodes. So I don't really have a favourite one. I just kind of tune in and watch their videos every once in a while when I see one in my subscriber box, because I am still subscribed. Most of the time these days, I watch my friends' channels for Minecraft. So previous servers that I've played on, I watch their Minecraft episodes, uh, and some other bits and pieces, and current Minecraft servers that I'm playing on, such as the Hypermine, I watch all of their videos as well, just to keep up with what's going on on the servers that I'm also playing on. Uh, they do a lot of good stuff, and I generally don't have time to watch everything, so I do try and watch at least the Minecraft from those Minecraft servers that I play on. And so, who's my favourite? I don't really have a favourite from them, I'm afraid. I kind of just watch videos and enjoy them. If I had to pick who is my favourite YouTuber, then I will say it's me. I'm my own favourite YouTuber. Because that just saves a lot of time and hassle, and it's very, very blunt and honest, which is normally the way I am. Alrighty, so I had to get out of the chair, had to get away from the table for a little while, and answer another question, in a way, um, in in a manner of speaking, anyway. So, uh, Jesse Robertson said, do some trees. Well, she didn't quite say it that way in the comments, but she did say, do some trees. So, I decided to come over here and just do some tree breeding. There was, uh, there was a few things that I can do just uh get the trees started just get the bees started for a start there we go so i decided to use a forest queen <laughs> obviously yeah uh grow some different types of trees so as i understand it and it's been a while since i did trees i think i did trees in material energy cubed a long long time ago uh, i'm just going to put some some trees randomly around here of different types in fact i'm going to put the spruce not the spruce, the birch and the oak over here together. Let's make a bit more space. The bees have a large area of effect, so this is good. Let's put a couple of those down. Let's put a couple of sp 
Baroos. What? What's that? It's a sapling. Okay. What's that? Is that a sap? That's a sapling. It's a sapling that's not showing up. Can I bone mill the sapling that's not showing up? Yes, I can. Okay, fine. And the oak. Okay. And let's have another spruce here. Uh, okay. It's a redwood spruce from forestry. Let's get rid of those. There we go. Okay, so the bees should pollinate, cross-pollinate between those tree leaves. And some of them should change colours and change shades and all that kind of stuff. And then I can use something to extract different kinds of saplings from them. And that is the plan for this little area here. So while we're doing that, yeah, that's uh, that's a question answered in a way. That was a suggestion to do such a thing. And so I am doing such a thing. Let's put this one over here. Why that one went like that, I don't know. Uh, let's take it back. In fact, I think I need four for those anyway, don't I? So let's just do a single jungle tree because the chances are that jungle is going to work better for me anyway. Uh, I've used all my bone meal up now. Oh well, I'll just have to grow naturally then. And uh, cocoa beans, awesome. So yeah, so I'm waiting for these to now change some sort of cross-pollination. The bees will change the tree leaves. But while we're looking at that, and while we're keeping an eye on the changes, uh, of which I'm going to use the Proven Grafter, and I'm going to get another couple of dark oak saplings, I think. Um, there was another question by uh, Helen... Helene? Helene Jessing? Something like that. Helene Jessing, I think so. What is your favourite mod? Uh, actually, I'm going to take Rick. Um, I, I don't really consider that I have a favourite mod. And putting me on the spot, I've said before, is like making me choose between my children. Uh, making me choose between my, my uh, three children. Like, which is your favourite? Well, I kind of like all of my three children. I don't really want to choose one as a favourite, thank you. Um, but go on, which is your favourite? Um, I, I, I know I can't, I just can't pick a favourite. So I generally say that my favourite mod is the Forge mod. Uh, the mod that brings all the other mods together and became kind of a... A platform for mod makers to test all the things out that they wanted to do. Let's uh, get four of those. And so Forge brings all the other mods together in mod packs. And I think mod packs is a thing that I like the most about modded Minecraft. Uh, individual mods, yeah, I can give or take, but uh, similar to how we've been doing Thorncraft for ages, you get dragged into one individual mod and you can get stuck doing it forever and getting stuck doing a mod forever is not as in entertaining as having a mod pack of mods to play around with over a, a longer period of time so anyway that is uh, that is not really an answer but it is kind of an answer why are all these trees not doing things as soon as i hit it with another yeah that's weird isn't it do that again. Right, that comes out with a bar bounding bar on it and no sign of this sapling whatsoever. Place another sapling on it and both of them appear. Weird. Weird glitchiness. Forestry glitch. Forestry glitch. Don't blame me, it's a forestry glitch. And let's put these frames in there as well. I could put a second one out, I think. Oh, where did I get that came from? I could put a second one out. But I think I'll just leave it like that for now and come back in a bit with some proven grafters. And uh, maybe answer another modded Minecraft question from one of the comments. Now my next question is kind of Thorncraft re related. Let's take that. We'll take the whole Thorncraft boots and everything. Um, was it John Phillips? John Phillips said... Uh, you can dye your Thorncraft armor in the same way as leather. So I figured we would put that to the test and see what it was like. That's a nice little easy thing we can do while we answer another question that John Phillips asked. And that was, are you going to do a Christmas special? And I generally do a Christmas special from one of my series. Uh, magenta. You were wondering what kind of colour it was going to be. It's going to be a magenta. And I think I could probably only do two. 
I, I can't do the goggles or revealing, can I? But I could probably do the boots. Let's have a look. Magenta. And we get a little bit of magenta on the tip there. Just that little bit there. Wow. Okay, well, thanks, John. And, and, that, I could, I could potentially dye it a completely different colour, but look at that. That's a little bit. I suppose it's very magenta-like already, isn't it? So, yeah, I've just, I just kind of, <laughs> I kind of didn't really do anything with it, did it? <laughs> I, I just made it my colours. Yes. So, uh, I may as well be like this, <laughs> for all the difference it makes. But that's cool, that's cool. And obviously people now know that you can dye your armour magenta. So thank you, John. And also, about the Christmas special. I generally do a Christmas special. I don't think I'll do a Christmas special for a solo series like A Druid's Tale. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a thing. And... I probably will be doing a Christmas episode for the Hypermine Vanilla. Generally, Christmas episodes for vanilla Minecraft servers work nicely for me uh, in the way that I like to do things. Um, it's about spending time with friends and in family, almost. I mean, the Hypermind server is now my online family, as it were. We spend a lot of time talking together and working together and playing together and organising things together and having family get-togethers and all that kind of stuff. And Christmas should be no exception. Um, the modded server, I'm not sure if we would do a Christmas special on the modded server, um, but more than likely a vanilla Minecraft Christmas special is easy enough to set up. So look forward to that in the future, why don't you? Another question was from... Uh, let me find it, let me find it, let me find it. Uh, Rick. Rick, hey, hey, there's Rick behind me. Let's uh, wander back. Rick, who also got his chocobo named. the One of the first gold chocobo. That I use Rick quite a lot, don't I, to fly around. Uh, Rick Bloomers. He's been with me a while as a subscriber and constant commenter, and he's also put some uh, things down on a world save for me to have a look at for my shop on the Infinity server. Uh, but we'll get to that another time. Hopefully, Rick, we'll get that to another time. Hopefully. I'm talking to you directly, I will hopefully do something with that soon. Um, when are you going to complete that structure for the magics? So we've got that Batania little area over there, and then all the rest of it is kind of building out into an area, but no walls, no things. Oh, I think that's pretty druidy. Building without walls, setting up your base without having walls everywhere. It's all open and nice and druidy, no? Maybe setting up in a forest would have been more druidy. I don't know, I don't know. Um, but the, the problem is that if I had built the structure I had first in mind, for one, it would look like a penis, and I didn't want that, <laughs> so I had to think of something new. And for number two, I, I seem to be spreading out from the initial little size area. I was just going to have a tower there for Thorncraft, and already I've got that, which I potentially could have fitted in the tower, but it would have been a struggle. And now I've got that recharge station over there, which is, again, uber big in comparison to my little tower over here. So overall, this entire complex up on this hill, the Batania, the Thorncraft areas, and also, coming soon, the blood magic stuff, need to spread out. So I need a blood magic altar thing spread out over here as well. So there's lots of things that still need to have adequate space um, aligned to it adequate space and once I've sort of arranged them in the adequate space as I need them then I can start building walls around them similar to how I've done that bit I knew I wasn't expanding out any further off the cliff so I built walls around it to put all my uh, gubbins on over there and I quite like the the way it's going uh, I did originally intend, like I built the big villa over there, and I built the bee house over there, and I built the Chocobo Island, I did intend on building the place first, and then having a few building episodes, and then going, getting cracking on with the mod itself. 
Uh, so I built the greenhouse first, then started Agricraft. I built the villa first and then started doing all of the uh, refined relocation. I built the Chocobo Island first and then started trying to breed all the Chocobo. And I built the bee house first and then started doing all the bees. Here, we have had a little stumbling block with Thorncraft. Uh, Britannia, yeah, Britannia, I built the building first and then started messing around with Britannia. But Thorncraft has a kind of a spreading nature to it as I needed more space for the next level of gear. And Blood Magic also has got a lot of sigils and things that we're going to need. So that's going to take up a lot of space around here as well. And hopefully I can keep it all kind of neat and formatted so that I can have a really cool build go up around it when I've at least got the areas sorted out. Hope that answers that question. And another question, which I suppose is kind of related to what I've just been talking about, is from Christian Westlin. And he said, uh, you really should use the Sigil of the Green Grove or the Ritual of the Green Grove. And well, uh, yes. I plan on making a mob farm next for the blood magic. And I plan on using the blood magic to get those kind of cool sigils and a few bits and pieces to help me do blood magic and other things, magical bonuses and things. Um, yes, the druid is going to have to look into the dark arts. The dark arts of, uh, well, not really dark arts, but go down the dark side of Thorncraft and look into the dark arts of blood magic to emphasize his druidic nature and the druidic plan and the master plan for everything is going to have to include a bit of blood magic especially with the nodes as well having the transposers to move nodes around quickly and easily without changing the node i think that's a thing that blood magic is also necessary for and i kind of need a mob farm because as you saw with doing all the trees i ran out of bone mill very very fast i don't have a lot of killing time i occasionally go out over there and kill a load of skeletons and stuff like that but i don't get much bone meal from it each night and i'm just generally working over here ready for the next episode trying to prepare things and set things up because i'm in a very peaceful area i'm very very secluded and lucky to be peaceful around here uh, i've also got um a magnum torch somewhere i can't remember where i put my magnum torch but I've got a Magnum Torch or two somewhere around these areas that I've been playing in for ages. So, yes. Sigil of the Green Grove and all that kind of stuff I will use. Uh, but I've just been using the watering can. Because I think that's uh, also part of your comment was mentioning that that is very, very similar. And I've just been using the watering can but killing the zombie uh, every ten uses. So there's that. And also Christian went on to ask... Um, I kind of want you to update Botania um, so that you can have the passive generation. These are sunflowers up there that passively generate me tons of mana. Um, have a decay and uh, some new fun things in Botania as well. Well, yeah, update Botania. That's the thing. The passive generation is kind of like a... A thing that's always been in Batania. And I've always seen the passive generation as like a solar panel. So the day blooms are like solar panels. Very cheap solar panels. Solar panels for mana. And the, uh, the decay on them. Um, I'm guessing that that's been added because there's so many other potential ways to make mana has been added. And Vasky wants you to have to use other methods because he created them. Damn it, he created those other methods to use. So damn well use them. And if you don't damn well use them, then I'll take passive generation away from you. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he just got bored and needed something to do one day. So he thought passive, regenerate, uh, passive flowers could decay. And that will be something to laugh at. Um... I did try updating the pack, the Magic Farm 3 mod pack. I did try updating it, and when I updated it, it messed up with messed up my refined relocation in the warehouse completely. Uh, refined relocation had an update, Batania had an update. The refined relocation part of the pack update uh, gave me so many headaches trying to figure out what was different and why it wasn't working the way it was supposed to work. And basically, it shut down 
everything that I had set up. Shut down the bees, shut down the warehouse, shut down the uh, food farm, shut down every part of my base that relies on the refined relocation for storage. And so I gave up on it. I didn't even begin to look at the Batania side of things to see what was going on in there and new stuff. But I will try again. And I suppose at the very least I should try and update Batania. But passive regeneration should just stay passive. I mean, do all flowers start degrading in Minecraft? I mean, these flowers, do they degrade? No. Why do these flowers start degrading? No. Do the other generating manner flowers degenerate and degrade? Do these? No. No, just the passive generation flowers re uh, degenerate. Mm -hmm. But I understand that that is very, very low tech and very, very simple. But for the amount of time that I was spending using the manor, I really didn't need a better solution. I really didn't need a better solution. That was it. I didn't need to have... TNT farms and have TNT machines that blow TNT up and send it into a flower or any of the other crazy wonderful mana generation because I didn't need to generate the mana. The mana was already there being generated very very nice and steadily. So I've been focusing on other mods and doing other things while having a passive regeneration just to fill my mana tablet up when I've taken a beating on my armor for a little bit. So yeah I hope that answers your question. Maybe, maybe not. I will try updating the pack again because I do like playing on the latest pack so that you guys can play on it too. Okay, so we've answered quite a few questions and while we've been doing that, we've got some of the tree breeding sorted out. Um, this, uh, you can just about tell in the uh, Walia that this here is slightly different. Let's go and have a, a closer look, closer inspection. You can see that this has extra texture to it. That's a normal oak leaves. This is an apple oak leaves. So if I use this thing, I get, oh, I get a silver lime sapling. Okay, that's cool. So already it's working. It's doing the thing it's supposed to do. Uh, the bees cross pollinate the trees and you get different tree varieties. And there's another one over here that I saw. These are dark oak leaves compared to, uh, well, dark oak leaves. But they've got that texture to them. So I should get something different. Uh, I've got a dark oak sapling from forestry. Okay. Uh, I also cut down the one silverwood tree over there. I tested it out by using shears to shear the leaves to see if I still got a sapling. And I did get a sapling back from the leaves. So in theory, I could put the leaves back down and shear them again and hopefully get more saplings. I don't know if that's going to work. I'll have to test that one out later. In fact, I'm going to put that away for now so it's not in my inventory while I check a few more of these out. Now, there is another question that I've got here from The Jumping Fox. Um, let me just read it. <clears throat> if you knew what you do now know about YouTubing, would you have done something differently? If I had known what I know now about YouTube and uh, how it takes over your life and how all the hard work that you have to put into YouTube happens to uh, need lots and lots of time and energy, uh, even though it's a really, really fun thing to do and uh, I still enjoy doing it and I still want to carry on doing it, uh, if I knew th what I know now about it all, I would probably not start YouTubing in the first place. That's fairly honest, isn't it? Uh, for anyone who's thinking about starting YouTube, well, be very, very serious about it. Because um, there's not really a lot you can achieve if you're just being part-time YouTube. Uh, if you're just doing it as a hobby, then... Enjoy it and keep enjoying it, but you're probably not going to make anything of it uh, because it takes a lot of work to get anywhere on YouTube these days, especially with a game like Minecraft, which is has been oversaturated and has had a lot of people making content for many years already. And now the game itself is kind of... 
I wouldn't say it's on a decline, but it's kind of declining. Uh, there's less and less going on. There's less mod packs these days. We're still in 1.710 mod packs. Only just recently the 1.8 mod pack came out and 1.9 Minecraft is on the horizon. So it's still going, but um, not as many YouTubers are doing it as they used to. And it's very difficult to get going on YouTube still. It's still very, very difficult. It's a very challenging process that you've got to be uh, very committed to to be able to achieve anything. Uh, I think I've got about just about all the saplings that I can out of this for now. I'll just keep cycling these bees, keep cycling them through and gathering some more. But we did get a silver lime and some more dark oak. Yeah, we got a silver lime though. That's a, that's a cool one. That was a good one to get first off. A silver lime. I'm going to plant there and see what we get out of it. Uh, I can also use an analyzer to scan these and I can also use the gender street to... Uh, pollinate them. I can take these bits of pollen that we pick up every now and again and crossbreed them in the gender street thing, the same as I do the bees. So that's a possibility in the future. I shall keep maintaining it and having a look at it. But for right now, that is it for this episode. Thank you all very, very much for your questions. I hope I didn't bore you by the lengthy answers. I hope to see you in the next episode. And if you're new to the channel, and uh, you came over here to find out what happened to WTF Geeks, Lewis, then, uh, well, I hope you are pleased with what you found and you subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next episode of A Druid's Tale. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.